Okay, so now Akon is becoming a household name, man. How was y'all situation faring at that time? How did you deal with your new artist becoming famous? How was he dealing with the new fame that he was receiving? Show money coming in, money coming in. I mean, how was everything going at that time? I mean, it's tough, man. It's tough. It's like we both growing up in a situation. Mm. You know, so, you know, he's learning. You know, it's like kind of like we both took off in the same car. Yeah. You know, when all the money came down, separate cars. <laughs> <laughs> so, so in, but in those cars, we got different people riding with us, uh, and everybody ain't going to the same place. Yeah. So now, when you start doing that, then you start seeing people going down different roads, and everybody got a thing of how you can get somewhere faster. They can tell you how to get there, um, but wasn't a part of the process on how to even get to where they were. So, when you start seeing that, and this in a lot of camps, you see it yeah. all the time, man. So me and him talked about those days way before the success, you know, because we we sit there and we, you know, we watch Jay and Dame, yeah. you know, we had the luxury of even watching, shoot, Michael Jackson and Joe Jackson. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Beyonce or Matthew Knows. Yeah. Uh, uh, Usher and Jay Patton. Yeah. So, um, man, we can go on. T.I., Jason Jeter, Whew. Kiki B. Jeezy. Yeah. Um, so we already seen this in the business. We already knew, but we just didn't know how it was coming. Mm. And I think we got blindsided um, both ways. You know what I mean? Just got blindsided by the business and learning. And then, you know, my man want to do something big for his country. And, um, you know, want to do something for Africa. And, you know, and I wanted to do something for America. Yeah. And I can't think right there it was kind of like a fork in the road, mm. you know, because a lot of times when you deal with production companies and you deal with these corporations and you sign these agreements, yeah. um, you know, you take this money, you got to deliver. Mm. You know, so technically we only had three albums. Damn. So you're talking about well over 100 million in billing and we only had three albums. What do you think it was about the money that caused y'all to get into separate cars, man? Um, what does that money do to all of those different situations? Why is it that when the money comes in, we all in here eating a bucket of chicken together at first, then the money comes in and already oh, later, gotta go. Why is it like that every damn time? <laughs> well, but my point is, I, I think if artists and um, companies, I think production companies were smart, they'll understand that one part is a product, mm -hmm. you know, that has a certain ingredients. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's a formula. Mm -hmm. you know that people bought into they mm -hmm. bought into that formula and a lot of times people want to switch the formula up Ugh. you know and, and it's like and it's okay to grow it's mm -hmm. okay to be different but my point is a lot of people lose that ground that ground floor because they're trying to reach for the ceiling and not knowing how to get there yeah. so so many people come in because at that point, now everybody's asking questions. Everybody's trying to get to the next level. So if you add 10 people that's trying to position themselves, mm -hmm. i.e. family members, girlfriends, kids, Damn. homeboys. Oh, forgot about them. <laughs> attorneys. Oh. Politicians. You add all of them, and next thing you know, you're in separate cars, and that conversation is different. Okay, so at what point do you realize that you're not talking to the same person that you grinded with? And what does that do to you, man, when you're like, this ain't the same guy that I helped get here. Well, this is somebody else. Well, I don't expect anybody to be the same. Mm. I expect you to grow. Yeah. I just expect you to grow, and it's okay to expand. Yeah. It's okay to add a million uh, extra room onto a mansion. That's right. But I wouldn't just tear the mansion down just to add on an extra room. Mm. Everybody ain't Jay-Z. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody ain't going to get that chance. <laughs> Everybody, you know, when they say make another hole, yeah. you know, uh, make another Michael Jordan, they don't come around that often. So people's like, make another Akon. I wouldn't dare try to make another Akon. My man is one of a kind. And I just think, you know, it is what it is at this point. Um, and... I wish him well with any of his endeavors, whatever he's doing in the world, man. My, my point was, you know, 
we have some prior business that need to be handled. Let's just take care of that. Yeah. And man, you move on, man. Do your thing, man, because that's why I did it. Mm-hmm. I did it because I want to see him successful. I want to see him grow. I want to see him feed his family. And uh, I'm always be that way. I've been that way since day one. I develop talent. Yeah. I don't hold people back. Okay. With that being said, you have a bird's eye view to everybody's career too, man. Mm-hmm. You know, from the foundation all the way up to the superstardom. What is it that you see from your point of view? Is it to the point now to where it's like you can pretty much predict what the hell's gonna happen now? Yeah, I mean, that's really basically what it is. I mean, we all human. But it's like, I done seen this shit before. I already know what this yeah, nigga we, we all human, man. And people gonna, um, people gonna grow. And sometimes, you know, growth is good. And sometimes people are misinformed on how the business works and they have to learn on their own. How was you and Akon's relationship when T-Pain came into the picture? I mean, it was good because for me, um, it was something else added. It mm-hmm. was uh, something, you know, it was, it was uh, more of, he was a, a genius. Yeah. You know, uh, is a genius. Um, so it was more like, man, this kid is the R&B you. So right. we'll take the pop sector, he'll t- and pop international, we'll take him, do all the R&B, and man, this is a this is a dynasty. You know, that's the way I thought. Um, you know, didn't quite play out that way. I mean, a lot of hit records and a lot of features, but you know, the togetherness, I think the money turned it into something a little different. Okay, how different is the money when we're talking about hundreds of millions of records being sold and stuff like that? How does that change? And then with you being a label executive at that time as well, how is it juggling and keeping your thumb on top of all of that stuff, well, man? Because that's a lot of stuff going on. Man, you know what's hard, man? See, at the beginning of this, they, the people in the record companies and these attorneys, they talk to the handlers. Mm. When the success comes, they bypass the handlers. Uh, so they automatically do the divide and conquer. Okay. So when they do the divide and conquer, a lot of guys, if they didn't grow up with any kind of cold or any kind of, you know, a lot of people grew up in broken homes. So they don't even know the art of loyalty. Mm. They never saw it. You Some people's not- claiming a street, but they don't really know what that really means. Because, you know, every guy in the street that I know that was a gangster uh, was trying to get out of the streets. Yeah. I don't know too many gangsters that want to stay in that, that space. Exactly. But that's how you know who the real gangsters are. Because the yeah. real gangsters ain't yeah. trying to be gangsters. Nah, nah, not at all. So that's why when I say, when I see these people, you know, when they come with that same, it's the same one too. It's been going on for years. Um, we already knew it was going to happen. We knew it was coming. My point was, I just thought my team would be a little bit more, um, more. Um, Prepared? Yeah, just a little, just a little smarter mm. about the decision making mm. because it's not about leaving one behind it's about pulling each other up mm. and and you're going to know that you're not going to be hot all the time neither is the next artist mm-hmm. so it's always going to be something but if we can just keep something hot all the time yeah then we can eat but you know 